Hey everyone, Reaper here again with another video. Before I get to the discussion, I just want to show off my new shirt that Patrick got me for my birthday. It's a little hard to see, but it is a Batman's profile. He's always, over the years, have gotten me some pretty cool Batman things. So thank you very much, Patrick. And, um, this, like I said in the previous videos, I've been on YouTube now for about eight years. And I think I'm due for another comic book call. And I'm not quite sure when it's going to be. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be maybe sometime this month. Usually I have my anniversary haul. And I guess this one will be uh, no different. But um, I'm planning to bring in a very special upgrade in that, that haul. But we'll, we'll see what happens. So there will be another comic book call. I believe it's comic book call number 49. So like I said, I've been on YouTube for eight years now. 49 comic book calls. It's just like... It's insane. Now, I know there are some other YouTubers that have been on just as long or longer and have well over a hundred or hundreds of comic book hauls. But, um, you know, it's, it's still amazing for me to have uh, that many comic book hauls in addition to all the discussion videos and other types of videos I've been doing um, over the years. So it's been a, it's been a long, long haul, if you will. <laughs> So um, today's topic is a very basic one. I don't think it's going to be that long, but it's just something to think about and something to maybe generate some conversation in the comments section. It's um, have you ever have you ever broken have you ever taken a book out of a slab, and why? All right, I'll start. <laughs> I have cracked books out of their slabs before, but not many. It's not something that I typically want to do. Uh, but I'll tell you why I did it with a few books. I think the, the very first book that I cracked out of a slab was an upgrade. And this is right not long after I started get, I got back into collecting. This was back in the summer of 2014. It was actually right before comic book call number one. But anyway, um, the first book I cracked out was X-Men 14, and the reason why I cracked it out of the slab was because of this. When I purchased it, the seller on eBay didn't mention, or I don't know, maybe something happened during travel that the slab was cracked. When I got it, it was cracked. Or maybe the, something happened, I don't know, before he sent it, I don't know. And I thought about, well, maybe I should return it. And I, then I said to myself, well, I don't know. I think I'll keep it. And I'll just remove the slab. And it was very easy to do because, like I said, it was cracked. And it practically just opened up, you know. And then I remember watching Cougar Comics back then. And he would talk about the what I'm, what I'm, ta what I'm discussing right now. Like he would crack books out of the slabs. He would buy them and get them, I guess, for good prices or whatever and see the grade and be, I guess, okay with the grade. But he liked all his books raw. And so he made a couple of videos, or, or maybe a video, just one video, where he would crack it out of the slab and then he would, this is, he showed how he would cut along the inner part of the slab so that he could remove the book safely without, you know, cutting or damaging or tearing the cover or the book. So I just followed what he did once I got into that inner well of the slab. And it worked out fine. You know, he, he showed where he cuts it along the sides where he could just like open the inner portion, the, the, the plastic that holds the book, like a book, where it opens like a, a, a front cover of a book. And you just slip the book out nice and safely. So I followed that method. And that's what I've done every time I opened up a slab. That was the first time I did it. And like I said, it wasn't like with Cougar where he would buy books. I mean, I don't know if he does this today, but where he would buy books with the purpose of cracking them out. I didn't do that. I bought it because, hey, you know, I thought this was a pretty good price and it just so happened to be slabbed. And that's why I did it. Now, I understand that before I go on to my other examples, I can understand. Let me throw this out to the, the, uh, to the audience here for comments. I understand that maybe I would I would imagine most people most collectors that 
crack the slabs is because they like to have them in their true raw form and they purchased the slab because they got a good deal on the slab or something to that effect but they like to have a more uniform collection where everything is raw and will only buy slabs on occasion if they get a good deal but once they get that slab they crack it out and they have many different ways of doing it this video is not a tutorial on how to crack a book out of a slab there are plenty of other youtubers including the the, the aforementioned cougar comics uh, from his video from years ago which i'm sure is still up how to properly crack a slab and nick also has them where you could properly cr uh, crack a slab without uh, causing any damage to the book it's not one of these videos it's just uh, more of a discussion on why you would crack them out but that was the reason why I cracked the slab out and over the years I've only had a few other cases where I took the book out and I used the same cougar method to be careful where I open up the open up the inner well uh, carefully without damaging the book because if you're not careful when you cut around the edge you can just like you when you're putting a book into a mylar you got to be a little careful because uh, the plastic is very you know it can be sharp and it's very coarse and it can slice a cover off or put a nasty tear into your book if you're not careful with removal so the other time that I cracked a slab that comes to, to memory was a couple of years ago I ordered an X I ordered an upgrade of X-Men number five and I think I talked about this on the video on the the, the haul video when I showed it a couple of years ago I don't remember which one it was but the same thing the guy showed he sold it to me uh, I bought it on eBay. He sold it, you know, it was without mentioning there were any cracks, and I don't believe that there were any. There were no cracks on it. I saw, I saw it, but he shipped it in this flimsy, like, plastic mailer without any boards, without any cardboard, without any extra padding, nothing. He just shipped it the very, very cheap way. And I remember I ordered this slab, and it was a couple of days, and I was checking the tracking, and I'm like saying to myself. How come this thing really isn't moving that fast? Now, I know back then it was COVID and, you know, uh, things were moving out slowly. But we were, this was towards the end of the summer where things started to move a little faster. But I just checked anyway. It's like, why is this? This, is, this should be priority mail, right? It should move a little faster in theory. <laughs> well, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, he used media mail. And that explains it. So... He used media mail to get the cheapest shipping possible. Look, tip for sellers out there in similar situations. Uh, buyers like myself will pay the shipping, the $14, the $15, whatever it is, the shipping to make sure that whatever we spent comes to us safely and securely. We're not going to start bitching if we're spending hundreds of dollars on something, whatever it is, whether it's a comic or some other type of collectible. Although some collectors will do this, but I think serious collectors like myself and others, we're not going to start bitching about the shipping after spending several hundred dollars on a book. We're not going to complain about $15 shipping or $20 shipping or $10 shipping or feel that shipping is free. We want the book to come safely. Now, I understand that maybe some sellers deal with buyers that who spend $200 and feel they need to have free shipping and they're upset that they have to pay $8 shipping. It's That's just moronic. And those are probably the type of buyers you don't want anyway. But for people like me and many others out there, we don't mind spending the extra, it's not even the extra money. It's the cost of shipping. We don't mind spending the cost of shipping to make sure that uh, what we paid for comes safely, all right? Well, this guy didn't do that. The thing came shattered. And you, could, and you could tell it was thrown around and boxes were probably stacked on top of it. So he made it right by taking some money off. He refunded a little bit of the money due to the damage of the book, which was fine. And that's, how, and that's, that's why it was cracked out. But again, I understand why some people crack books out for other reasons, not because of uh, the things that happened to me. Um, I typically don't buy books that crack them out like maybe some others I mean I you know I I, I I guess there's sometimes I wish I had a more uh, uniform collection what I mean by that is you know everything be a certain way but I think that's more of a, a compulsion rather than you know anything else that everything needs to be a certain way you know and all that I'm not saying it's a 
necessarily a bad compulsion for those that like that, like, oh, I got to have my book slap or I have to have all my books raw. Um, I don't, I'm not saying that's bad, but I think it's more of a compulsion rather than anything else that you just, the need to have everything a certain way. And then for those that don't fit that category, I just said, well, maybe it's because people, and I think this is true for many as well, they just like the idea of having the books in hand and that's why they crack them out of the slabs. Some of them are the, the purists that don't believe in slabbing and all that stuff and think slabbing is the end of the world. Slabbing's been around now for over 20 years. It's hardly the end of the world when it comes to comic book collecting. As a matter of fact, you know, as it, when it comes to selling, you know, and like I said, I dabble in selling every now and then when I want to move something because I upgraded or I just want to move stuff I don't want anymore for whatever reason. I found that I like having it slabbed. You, you know, I know some sellers say, well, slabs don't move as fast as raw books. And, you know, I can understand that. But I personally like to have it slabbed because then, you know, there's the grade. You know there's no restoration. You know, for those buyers that are very, very picky about everything, they're nervous about everything. Oh, how do you know there's no restoration on it? Oh, I think it's this great, or I think it's that great. And I understand that that type of buyer can be um, in the minority, but just like when you're working in retail, most of the people that you meet, as I've been told, and it is from experience many, many years ago, most of the people in retail you meet are pretty good, but you remember the ones that are not so good. But um, I think slabbing is a good thing and it does cut out a lot of the the back and forth and of course you still have people saying oh that's a nine it doesn't look like a nine well that's what cgc gave it you can disagree all you want but that's the, the grade on it but um i think it's good for several reasons but so what about you do you normally crack out slabs uh, books out of slabs do you do you do you have a particular reason why i mean other than uh, my reason is because you truly feel like, hey, I like to have it in hands. I like to open it up and all of that. Um, I, I, I was, I was on, before I go about this subject, I, I was on uh, Facebook the other day and I saw some guy, he was cracking open a slab and he had a screwdriver and a hammer and all that stuff. And I'm not criticizing his method. Um, although maybe those of you that professionally crack out slabs, I mean, you know, professionally. Um, maybe you might have a problem with that method. I don't know. But I was just looking at the book and I'm saying to myself, why the hell would you want to crack that out? You know, I mean, for me, you know, slabbing, it's money. You know, I don't like to waste money. If I'm buying a slab, whether I think I'm getting a good, good deal or not, I'm kind of like the idea it's in that slab because money's spent on that book and it's in a slab even though I didn't have it slabbed, but I still think that, you know, there's money involved, whether you try to, whether you decide to keep that book or not. So anyway, uh, about that example I was giving you about the guy that cracked it out and he's showing, opening up the book and I'm saying to myself, I saw the inside of that book, man, maybe it should have stayed slabbed, <laughs> but that's just me. That's just me. That, that, that to me, that would have, it should have stayed in slab and should have been upgraded down the line, but whatever, that's just me. Maybe he doesn't want to upgrade it down the line. He's just truly happy with what he got, and that's that's fine too. So give me some of the reasons why you um, crack books out or have cracked books out in the past. It'd be very interested. I mean it would be very interesting to hear about. So anyway, take care.